guys, welcome back to another episode of Contingency X. My name is Travis, and I'm here with my good friend Tyler Hughes with uh, Max Ornett Academy. We have a cool little project that we're going to be working on today. Our friends over at MDT um, sent us over their TAC 21 chassis system for the Remington 700 short action in 308. Yeah. Um, Tyler, this was a project that actually you kind of looked at, you've been looking at for a while, and, uh, and we contacted the guys over there. But why were you interested in this particular system? Uh, what caught me the most was the way that the action bolts into the chassis. It kind of lowers the, uh, the center of the recoil. Okay. And I, I thought, you know, I really like to try this chassis out to see how it shoots. I believe that the way that it is built and designed, you're actually going to have better control over the recoil for follow on shots and staying on target. Uh, so here we are with this chassis now. And uh, once we get it built, then We'll test it out. We'll take it out to the range. So what we're going to do is, is the guys over at MDT, they sent this to us. We're going to do this video to show you how to actually put all the pieces together. It's um, They say it's about a half hour build. We're going to see if we can do it a little bit faster. So what we've done is we've already taken your barrel out of your previous rifle. Yes. Uh, so what we had to do was we had to remove the trigger from the action. Uh, but when I had this rifle built by Spartan Rifles out of San Jose, we used a Badger ordnance recoil lug. Um, now what you need to know about the MDT system is that you must use a standard um, Remington 700 shaped recoil lug. So what we did is we ordered the recoil lug from MDT. It is the 0.318 thickness so we still have the rigidity that we're looking for um, but we need this specific pattern for it to work in this chassis. Perfect. So we got everything pulled apart just to save you guys some time. If you don't know how to pull apart your Remington, um, your 700 or whatever you have, you know, go look it up. There's tons of videos out there on YouTube how to do that or take it to your local gunsmith. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to start assembling all the different pieces. And what we have is it looks like four major components. Correct. Correct. Yep. Okay. So once you go through them, this is. This will be the lower housing here. Okay. This is going to. Uh, essentially bolt our action into the action housing okay and it's going to give us the trigger well this is the front rail this will basically slide over the barrel and it will lock in to the action housing all right and then our fourth component will be the buttstock assembly all right which allows us to well one have a butt stock, but two remove the butt stock so that we can take the bolt out of the st uh, out of the stock. Also, we can make it shorter for transportation. Absolutely. And the butt stock is um, completely adjustable, so we have an adjustable uh, cheek well. Correct. And we have an adjustable length of pull. Yes. Okay. Um, so this is uh, the MDT um, stock, but we can put any kind of AR platform stock onto this, from what I understand. Correct. Correct. This is the rear piece. Uh, so it would slide over the receiver housing and you can put any style of buffer system in here and actually work with any type of AR style uh, buttstock, whether it be a, a Magpul or you know, whatever else you can find. Whatever else you prefer. So what tools do we need to get this job done so that we can get everybody on uh, out there watching caught up to speed? Well, right now we have um, a set of bits Allen's, okay, the screwdriver set, a socket, a half inch wrench to mount our scope, and a torque wrench. Perfect. Well, let's get into the build, Tyler. You're, you're, uh, you guys all know by now I'm not a gunsmith. I just like to tinker around and mess with things. But Tyler, this is uh, one of your areas of expertise. So let's get to it. All right. Well, we're going to start with the buttstock. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll take this guy here, all right. <coughs> And we'll slide that. This is how this fits in. And this is supplied by MDT. This Correct. is their adapter. So what we'll do first is we'll screw that miniature buffer tube, if that's what you want to call it. Buffer cap, maybe? Buffer cap, OK. So we'll slide it into the rear housing. And then the butt sock slides over. You can see how it snaps in there. It snaps into place. You it's, heard an audible snap. You did. The only thing that holds it on is this single bolt. We'll screw it in. Okay. 
So now when you're tightening this down, does it need to be tightened down to any specific uh, measurement or is the hand tight good enough? I would say that, you know, just past hand tight would be okay. Okay. Uh, but what we'll do instead is just to make sure that we're being consistent about the whole process is we'll tighten it down to 25 inch pounds. Just okay. to make sure. And our, I know for right now we're not using any kind of Loctite, but would you recommend um, doing any kind of Loctite for this particular application right now? I wouldn't. Uh, a lot of these firearms, you don't need to use any type of Loctite. But if you do, use the blue Loctite and not the red. Right. That way it's not permanent and you can uh, take it apart if you need to. Correct. All right. So we're set at 25. And if you want to hold that. Absolutely. Okay. And we're at 25. So. Okay. So that's the butt socket. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. One screw, an audible click to make sure it's snapped in, and we can essentially set this aside for now. We can. We're done with okay. that part. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> so now we're going to move on to the receiver housing. So the way that this works is the receiver would slide in through the front, and we're going to butt the recoil lug up against this uh, inside groove here. Okay. All right. Now, you'll notice we do not have a trigger in here right now. So we have to slide the receiver out. All right. See if we can position it so that everybody can see. All right. But what we essentially have to do is place the trigger inside the housing without the receiver all the way back because the safety has to come out of this hole right here. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. All right. So we're going to put the uh, put the trigger on safe. Okay. So that the safety selector is to the rear. To the rear. So we'll put that in the hole and now we'll slide the receiver back. Okay. And then we should be able to snap it in place. Just like that? Just like that. Okay. Now granted, you guys, this is the first time we're ever putting this together. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it could be a little bit tricky. Just make sure that when you do this, you take your time with it. Like anything, you don't want to rush through it, start bending pieces, losing pieces, or, you know, last thing you want to do is hurt yourself or cut yourself. Absolutely. So just be patient with it. I'm going to take the two action screws and we're just going to place them into the receiver housing so that they can keep the receiver from going anywhere. So it's, it's just locked in place for the most part? For right now, yes. Okay. All right, now what we have to do is we actually have to put our trigger together while it's inside the housing. Okay. All right, so first... And again, this is gonna be the same process for any trigger. I know we're using the Timney trigger right now, but for any stock or any trigger for the Remington 700, whether it's stock or aftermarket, the process is the same. Correct. Okay. All right. So we have our bolt catch, our two trigger pins, okay, and our spring. Perfect. So what we'll do now is we'll put our trigger bar in there, okay? Make sure we have no obstructions and that we can get it in a nice solid fit, which it looks fine to me, okay? All right, so what we have to do now is we have to place the trigger pins into the trigger. Okay. Right? So we'll start with the front pin. It's going to be the short uh, short guy. We'll actually slide it into that hole right here. Okay. And line up our trigger so that the pin will start to go all the way through. Now, if you would please, sir, hold. You want me to just rotate a little bit for you? Something like that. See our trigger is firmly in place now. Yeah, it's locked in keep, place. We're gonna have to keep going, all right. But the important part is that one, we have the beveled edge facing away from the bolt catch. Okay. Okay. Now the other part is that we want to hammer the pin in, but it cannot impede the bolt catch. Gotcha. So, so the bolt catch bar needs to be able to still move freely even though this pin is holding the trigger in. Gotcha. All right. 
and just so you guys know, we're using a 1 8 inch punch um, to do this right here. Okay, so. Give you guys a quick view. The trigger, that front pin is now inserted and our bolt catch bar is not impeded. Perfect. All right. Now we have to do the spring, correct? Yes. Still working on that spring. Dropping that baby in there. And we got it. That was pretty Perfect. easy. That, I think that was pretty lucky. That was lucky. It was. Okay, and what we need to do with that is we're going to go from our side this okay. time. And we're going to push the pin through with the bevel side facing Outwards. away. Okay. Yes. Now what we need to do with that is not only do we need to put the trigger pin through the bolt uh, bolt catch bar, but it has to go through the hole in the spring. And that's what's going to hold everything together on the rear side. Correct. All right, I do have it. Okay, I'm just going to give you some support here. So, oh, so it's in. That's good. Now okay. we'll bring our punch out. So let's just go ahead and... It's going in pretty, pretty easy. Keep going. So what we want, what we're looking for, is to make sure that the trigger pin the rear trigger pin goes all the way through, but it doesn't go past the bolt retaining bar. Right, because if it goes past the bolt retaining bar, then it's not going to function, it's not going to hold in place. Exactly, and that is that is our uh, the function of that rear of that rear release. is to be the pivot. So if you can, we can get the cameras to look here. As we press this button, you'll see the bar moving. Okay. So now we know that our trigger is functioning the way that it should, at least in terms of the bolt stop. All right. So it looks like we're good on that part. Trigger's installed, All right? Okay. Now we're going to move on to actually installing the rail. Okay, so what we'll do is I'll lift this up. So the rail is just going to slide on, um, slide on. And if you look at the way that the rail is designed, you have a completely flat edge and then you have an angled edge. The angle edge is towards the front. So right now we're going to slide this on upside down since everything else is upside down. Got it? Yep. All right. Sliding forward. Now you'll notice here there's a screw hole. There's three of them. One, two, and three on the top. Okay. That being said, we'll lay this down. Now, obviously, we're doing this as a, uh, a team here, but you can do this on your own, providing you have a vice or some other kind of tool to help keep everything in place and hold it as an extra set of hands for you. Absolutely. And you also notice we're doing everything upside down. We are doing everything upside down. Okay. We're just going to put these in right now. Finger tight. And then the last one here. And that last one, we will need to use a specific bit. So we're going to use one of our bits to go ahead and light, uh, tighten this top screw down just because we can't get our fingers in there because of the Picatinny rail system. Correct. All right. So they're all finger tight right now. No pressure added. And we'll come back later and make sure that they're tightened up. So now we have the rail installed, okay? You can lock tight these if you want to, right? But you shouldn't need to. Um, but I would put a, you know, a decent amount of force on them. Let's say 30 inch pounds, 30 25. Inch pounds. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now we get to move into the lower. The lower. All right. Now, you can see here that we have two spots for the receiver screws. Right. Okay. And what's nice is you don't have to remember what screw is what because they're the same size. Okay. That okay. makes it nice and easy. That does make it easy. What we can do beforehand before we get it installed is we can install the grip. 
right? Make life a little easier, why not? A little easier. What we're using is an Umbrella Corp uh, pistol grip. <clears throat> but again, this will take any AR style pistol any grip. Any AR style pistol, pistol grip, absolutely. Magic pole, BCM, whatever it is. Of course. Okay. We have our Phillips drive and our screw, All right? Have it in the correct hole. And we're just gonna screw it in. Okay, making sure that we don't feel any abnormal tension. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to cross uh, cross thread these screws. Don't want to cross thread it now. And if you notice, right, as we're screwing it, the screw has a different angle than the pistol grip does. Right. There we are. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Okay. Okay. Before we install this, they do give us these two pins. Okay. These pins drop into these holes. So what it is is a retaining system, right? So that pin would fit into this hole here. Into okay. the top front. Yep. And, and the then, rear back. Yes, but you can see that the there's a couple different holes, right? So you have to make sure that you're dropping it in the right hole. Okay. So which hole are... You're going to drop it in in the back. There's only one hole that fits, but there's two holes that look about the same size. Right. You're dropping it in the hole without the threads. All right. Gotcha. Just like so. Now, you can see got a pretty solid grip on it now and it's not even screwed down right right it's just going to keep it from one from moving but two it's also going to help with relieving some of the pressure that would go on the action screws okay so we got the pins in there oh sorry one came one got stuck in the, into the actual that, lower that's all right we're going to leave it now one other thing we need to install we have this guy okay what is that that's a what you this is, is, let's turn this around here, is this slides in right there, just behind the trigger on the opposite side of the where the bolt knob and the safety selector switch would be. Okay, what's that for? What this is, is it allows your buttstock attachment something to grip onto. You see the ridges that are in there? Right. That's what that is. So it's a locking mechanism. Correct. Okay, perfect. All right. So we'll push it down. It slides in very easy. It sits flush. It sits You're flush. good to go. Okay. Absolutely. Easy enough. Now let's drop this guy on there. Oh, we're in the wrong hole. All right. Now we have the correct bit for the action screws. Now, what we need to do here, Travis, is we need to make sure that our action is lined up so that we're able to actually tighten down into it, right? Without cross-threading, without hurting the threads of the action. Right. Okay, so we're going to tighten those down. Just hand tight, make sure they go in nice and smooth. Now, it feels pretty solid right now. Yeah, absolutely. Now, with the action screws, what we are going to do is we're going to use our torque wrench here. And we're going to tighten these down. I like to go 60 inch pounds. Okay. Okay. Which is pretty standard, 60 inch pounds. Place our bit on here. Holding, sir? Yep. Okay. Got the click. Now, you're moving over to an extension just because of it the does, depth of the cavity here. It does so that you sit can pretty low in there, so I want to make sure that we have the ability to reach it. Alright. 
All right. There you go. Positive click. Okay. We'll rotate that out and get our bit. There you go. Okay. Now, we're pretty much ready for the installation of the bot stock, but there's one thing left that we have to do. What's that? We need to put the bolt inside the receiver. Now, it's important to put the bolt in first because once you have the stock in, the bolt's not going to come out. Correct. The stock does prevent the bolt from coming in. Okay. All right. That's one of the features of the stock. So, take our bolt carrier group, or our, our bolt here. Slide it in. I, I heard it click. You heard the positive right. click. Absolutely. So, we have positive retention on the bolt. We'll slide forward. Perfect. Why don't we make sure it's clear before we assemble? It looks clear. We'll find out. There you go. Positive functionality. All right, let's check to make sure the safety works. Yeah. Safety works. So we have a successful trigger installation. Now, one thing that we may also want to try before we go any further with this is to make sure that the magazine sits properly. Correct. Okay. So we have two different magazines here. One is, uh, or actually both of them are Accuracy International type magazines or fit magazines. Um, one is from MDT, which is their polymer style, uh, which they sent along with it. And then this particular one is, uh, this one's yours. Where did you get this one from? This is an accuracy. This is accuracy. actual accuracy. Okay. So we're going to test both magazines to make sure they both have positive retention for you guys. Fits pretty well. Okay. So you can see it's in there. It's not going anywhere. Now you just push the magazine lever forward and the magazine comes out. In our polymer magazine from MDT. There it is. There you go. So positive retention on both style magazines. Um, we are aware, obviously, that there are other companies making um, Accuracy International type magazines. I, we don't have those on hands, but we'd assume that if they're up to standard, they're going to fit here as well. Correct. Perfect. All so right. we're pretty much, we are pretty coming, much done. coming down the final stretch here. We are. How about we do this? We'll take our bipods. Okay, make life Might easy as well put that us. on there. Okay. And we'll slide the bipods onto the ring here. Now, now we know that there's a big trend with the Atlas bipods. Yes. And the G, uh, the, oh, there's a plethora of them out there that are new bipods. But uh, you always seem to be tried and true to the Harris bipods. I, I love the Harris bipods. I love the positive clicks, the spring-loaded, right? Um, the, the solid stability that they provide is just, you know, what I've learned on and I like. Uh, but I, I have used the Atlas bipods and they've, you know, come through for me in a pinch. And these will definitely accept Picatinny rails. You can see that there's holes drilled, so you're able to screw Picatinny rails. On three rails sides. On three sides. On your, your three, six, and nine o'clock. Obviously, at your 12 o'clock, you already have a Picatinny rail system. Yep. Um, and it is a full length rail system so that you can put any optic, which we will be doing later on, as well as night vision or lasers or lights or whatever. All that fun stuff, oh yeah. Yeah, whatever tactical stuff you want to put on here. Yeah, well it's important, okay, that this front rail, it's meant for accessories. It's meant for your lights, your lasers, your night vision, things of that nature, all right? Well, when mounting the scope, you want to keep it on the receiver part of the stock. Right. All right? Any chance that this front end becomes loose, the screws work their way out, or whatever unknown natural disasters can happen when you're a long-range shooter, your scope will stay in the spot that it's supposed to. And, it'll, and in that, it'll stay true. Correct. Perfect. All right, so let's pull the bipods out, and we can actually stand our stock up. Okay. And then your stock, sir. Okay. Now, this is pretty simple. This lever here, this will be the locking mechanism. Now there's two points of contact for this lock. You have this bar inside, okay? When you slide the stock on, your rotator here should be down, all right? It makes that bar flat so that it slides on easily. <coughs> what you should note, excuse me, sir, yep. is that inside here, there is a groove at that butt stock or at that right, attachment maybe, piece. Like this. That attachment piece locks into. Okay, so that's why it's important that our bar is down so the stock will slide on 
easy. Correct. Okay. Here, we'll even do it the wrong way. Right. So this is the wrong way we're going to show you real quick. Will not quick. fit without that we'll bar slide on. being down. All right, so now we got the bar down, slide it forward, and we lift our bar up. And you hear it, you heard it click? Heard the click. Okay. It's now locked on that, that retention bar that we slipped in earlier. That little retention piece. Correct. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now we have the stock set up, and we can do our adjustments that we need, things of that nature. And you notice the bolt will not come out. No. So let's show them this way. So Tyler was saying the bolt, bolt will not come out. The stock actually holds it into place here. Um, and we do have a nice solid fill. Yep. There's only one thing we need to go back and, and double check. The fore end rail screws. Yes, we did not tighten those down. So let's go ahead and do that now. And what are we going to tighten those down at? At the 25? Yeah, we're going to set them to 25 inch pounds and keep it consistent okay. with the rest of uh, our settings. So while Tyler is doing that, we'll go over some of the features of this rifle platform. Again, the modular um, uh, stock platform. So you can actually put on any kind of AR style stock on here that accepts a buffer tube. Um, the stock does come off with a simple latch, so it's very easy to store if you want a smaller compact case. The rifle is um, capable of accepting Picatinny rails at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions up front. And you do have a full length 1911, or I'm sorry, 1913 Picatinny rail system at the top. Um, what's cool about this is the simple fact that, I mean, it's a solid, solid build. Um, you have tons of places to add accessories. Of course, we already have the bipod on here. Um, and it's, it's a system that you can pretty much make to fit you without having to go and take it to a custom gunsmith. Correct. Now, what we should point out, okay, is on all of your, on a majority of your Remington 700s, when you buy the top rail, okay, right. It has a bias built into it. Correct. 20 or 30 minutes of angle, right? Well, so does the MDT chassis. It has a 20 minute of angle bias. So you can see the gap between the bottom of the rail and the chassis here is wider at the back than it is at the front, giving you that 20 minute of angle downward Which bias. Which is standard and important for all precision rifle shooters. It is. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have the rifle all set up, it's in its new uh, TAC 21 chassis. This rifle is capable with the right ammunition reaching out to a thousand yards plus. Absolutely. Um, but if we can't see it, we can't hit it. So what optic are we gonna put on here, Tyler? So I brought in the US Optics LR17. Uh, great, great scope. It's a 3.2 to 17 power. Okay. The reticle that I have in here right now is the MPR, and it's a Mills Adjustments Mill reticle. All right, but they make uh, all types of different custom configurations. You can get minute adjustments, minute reticle, uh, actually it's inches per hundred yards. Okay. Um, we're going with the Badger ring setup. Okay. Uh, particularly because I like the attachment that you can purchase aftermarket. Right. With the cosine indicator. All right. And then we also have the US Optics throw lever. Okay. To That's what you make easy uh, power adjustments. All right. Terrific. So, uh, we're not going to actually set the scope up for an individual. We'll just get it mounted to the rifle. Right, just so we could show the viewers how it should look. How it should look. All right. uh, now, obviously, you know, the adjustment forward or back is going to be based upon the individual user that it's being set up for. Correct. So, this is just a guesstimate, just so, again, the viewers can see where it should sit. And we want to make sure that the scope is set on the main housing of the bolt and the trigger Correct. right on the um, absolutely form. all right so we're set on the main housing right now what we'll do is we're you see between the pick uh pick tiny rails you have some play right so we're going to slide the scope all the way forward okay so that when the recoil of the rifle you know is taking place you're not getting scope movement right all right so we'll slide it forward we'll hand tighten it down okay Making sure our rings are locked onto that rail. And I believe I have 
a magic wrench. There you go, a magic wrench. Right. You always have a wrench in your pocket. I do, yes. And I'm just gonna hand tighten them right now. Uh, we need to go back with a torque wrench. Okay, you have obviously the torque wrench we've been using this whole time, or you have set torque wrenches. But these rings need to be tightened down on the rail, 65 inch pounds. Okay. All right. But for the purpose of the video, we're just gonna hand tighten. Just gonna hand tighten them. And now we're set up. Now you're set up. You have a fully functional precision rifle that, I mean, it, it's beefy. It is. It, it's beefy, but you know, it doesn't feel much heavier or much, you know, much different than any other tactical rifles out there. No, not I mean, at all. For the amount of metal that this rifle looks like it has, it does not weigh what it looks like. No, not at all. And I mean, you you know, we have the J. Allen chassis on one of our 700s. Um, we have, you, per, I mean, particularly, you do a lot of training with Barrett and so on and so forth, so you shoot the MRAD a lot. I do have an MRAD. Um, we have a, a plethora of different type of custom configured rifles, and you're right, I think this does fit within that weight parameter of everything else that we're shooting, so it's not going to be over, but you do have a lot more metal to this. Yeah, uh, you know what I've noticed is, uh, when we were putting it together, did you feel the weight that was just in the buttstock itself. Right. That seemed to be the heaviest of the four main components. It did. Right, but now that you grab it, it kind of feels like that helps even. It keeps it balanced. The rifle out, absolutely. You know, absolutely the weight of the barrel, balanced. weight of the buttstock. I like it, and you know, what I was talking about earlier is, you know, when you look at your Remington 700s and the other stocks that are available, the receiver normally sits higher than your buttstock. Right. But now our receiver is set down into the chassis and you're getting, you know, all that transfer of recoil energy at a lower point, right? So when your rifle is in your shoulder, you know, you're getting that lower That lower recoil. impact. Yeah. The lower uh, recoil impact. Which I, I think is going to help us manage recoil and stay on target. Stay on target, reacquire targets faster yep. if we, you know, if the target acquisition changes. Um, Again, so just a quick overcap. This is the Remington 700 chassis, or, or action rather, I should say, inside of the MTT TAC-21 chassis system. The rifle and the barrel, everything was put together by Mark over at Spartan. Yes. Um, and then MDT uh, sent us the TAC-21 so that we could test it out, try it out, um, out in the range. Now that we have it built and configured for you guys to view, the next step is to... Shoot it. Shoot it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See what we can do. Take a break here and, and go out to the range and, and see how she does. Actually, what we'll do is we'll film another video of that. That way we can get this out to the viewers beforehand and uh, give them something to look forward to. I'll make sure I'm wearing the same shirt so we can fool them all. I think that it's the same day. We'll, we'll do our Bam. and magically appear out at, the, at range. the range. I like it. Perfect. Well, Tyler, it's been a truly a pleasure. Every time we get together, I learn something new. Um, you know, a plethora of knowledge, and this is... A uh, phenomenal looking weapons platform. I can't wait to get out to the range and shoot it with you. Absolutely. So, Look forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, until next time, you guys, make sure that you follow us on our social media, on Tyler's social media. All the links will be down below. Uh, share us, like us, love us, follow us. If you have questions, you want to see something different, uh, let us know. We'll be happy to do everything that we can to oblige. Great. We have a ton more of these videos planned for, uh, for this year and next, so uh, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned to everything that we're doing. Until then, be safe, have fun, and we'll see you out at the range. You gotta do your best Vanna White. My Vanna White?